Hey, what is up guys? Today we're going to start coding our turret logic. So we're going to tackle the base tower script, the base entity for every single of our turrets. So without further ado guys, let's get started. Okay, before we get started, something that, that is starting to annoy me just a little bit is uh, the skybox. Skybox really annoy me for some reason because of the color in my scenes. So I'll go ahead and I'll remove it. Um, I'll go in the window, then lighting, and in there where it says default skybox, I'm actually just going to go ahead and select none. Uh, you can change it if you want, but I'll just use none. Okay, now that this is done, um, there's another thing that annoys me a lot actually that I'm going to fix. Um, it's We don't really have control over our camera. Say we just want to click on our button down here, then it moves our camera and it's kind of annoying. So we're, go we're going to go ahead and fix that right now actually. So we're going to put... A, uh, another condition when we move our camera. So let's go ahead and open up the camera folder. In there you have the state folder and we should be using the third person camera. Let's open that up and in here where it says, uh, let's see, where we process the motion over here, where we add current Y and current X to our, actually where we add our input to these value, we are going to put this inside of a if statement. Uh, like so, and these three lines, and inside of our if we're going to put another condition, and um, I'll just do a input get mouse button one. So what this does is, if I am holding the right click, because mouse button uh, index one is the right click, so if I'm holding the right click on my mouse, then I'm allowed to move my camera. Okay, let's test this out. Good, now it's a little bit less uh, annoying. Of course, we can put some kind of speed modifier on that. So, uh, sensitivity, I think. We have these. Yeah, I'm going to up these a little bit. So, maybe 8 and 3 here. Just to see that. And yeah, makes more sense. And now I can click without my camera going uh, pretty much all crazy. Good, so now to the actual episode. So what are we doing in this one? We are actually starting the towers. And it's going to be a fairly big episode, so try to follow along as uh, as much as you, as you can, because it's, um, it's going to be a little bit complicated. First, let's create a new folder. It's going to, uh, to have its own section in our script folder. We are going to call this one a tower. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our new base tower script so right click on tower create C sharp now let's see what we have to do in here we have to do a lot of things um, but we're gonna start really simple actually what we're gonna do is we're going to declare some fields so we'll clean it up like we always do and we are going to declare um, protected field actually because this is a base class so we're gonna be uh, using this as a base of say um, chill tower or AOE tower. Let's go ahead and write some protected floats. Um, first one is going to be refresh rate and I'll explain to you what it does in a short moment. Second one is going to be uh, actually I'll put it right above that. It's going to be a protected float as well that I'm going to call elastic and we're not going to set the value to that. And then again, same thing down here, protected float, cool down. Actually, last, let's let's do this first, last action, and then protected float, cool down. Okay, um, so is equal to one for now. So I'll be using these two, well, these four fields as a timer, timer fields. We did that pretty much, uh, everywhere where we will use a uh, timer so it's the same concept here what we are going to do is let's write our update so private float update if our tower is on cooldown so we write if time dot time minus the last action which is going to be uh, action is going to be the shooting action is bigger than cooldown so if we are ready to to act again, actually let's just write it in common, so if the tower is ready to shoot, 
then we are going to refresh so refresh every uh, 10 seconds to find a target okay now let me explain really quick actually let's do the <laughs> let's do the the timer first so if again time the time minus elastic is bigger oops then refresh rate and for some reason I don't have my IntelliSense again that's weird then we do the uh, the uh, look for target action okay so let's look at this now um, if we're not on cooldown then every 10 second or actually every one tenth of a second if you are not on cooldown then go ahead and look for target and the reason we added this additional timer here is because we're going to be using a uh, physic function to look for a target it's going to be casting on multiple colliders in the scene and we don't necessarily want that to happen say 30 times a second every frame so so for the sake of optimization we just added this timer over here it's not required but you should still leave it there because it's going to uh, it's going to demand a lot of resource if you don't so let's write elastic is equal to time dot time because we are going to refresh that timer every time it happens and then this is where we get our target so get a target and then we call action if we have a target so let's go ahead and declare ourselves a say transform we're going to store our target inside a transform so transform target is equal to and now now we have to go ahead and get the closest enemy to the tower uh, we're going to leave it on null for now and we're going to write our function after that so let's just do if target is not equal to null then go ahead and shoot I'm actually going to name this action and we are going to send the target parameter that we just got let's go down here and create action so private void action with ta which takes in parameter a, a transform that we're getting here but here doesn't exist just yet so let's go ahead and create a new function for that as well um, let's call it get nearest enemy yeah that would make sense okay oh so come here private this returns a transform get nearest enemy just like this okay so this is the logic of a tower if you are not on cooldown then every one tenth of a second uh, look, look for enemy around us if there is any enemy then shoot and then shoot is going to put the tower back on cooldown so in the action over here we're gonna say last action is equal to uh, time dot time so this pretty much resets our first cooldown and then we can do some shooting here so debug dot log um, let's write let's write let's write let's write this transform so uh, say actually game object could work too game object dot name so this is the name of our tower plus is shooting at and then plus uh, oh, action Let's, let's call this target instead is shooting at target dot name so when we actually shoot uh, the the action we're gonna do is we're simply going to write something in the debug dot log or in the console my bad okay so this uh, looks like it could work but we don't have any return value here in nearest enemy so let's just return a null if nothing happens everything is compiling let's go back and tackle this uh, bad guy here so to get nearest enemy how exactly are we going to do this let's do uh, some bit of comment here test if there are any enemies so if there are um, just enemy enemies within our range let's add a range parameter as well so let's go up here protected float range we're gonna say uh, 5 for now these values are all going to be overridden a little bit later on of course okay now to test this we are going to do collider array that we're going to call all enemies is equal to physics dot overlap spheres which returns a uh, collider array so that's why we 
we got this uh, specific type and then it asks us for the position of our sphere and also the radius. So this is the same function we use for the melee attack spell. It pretty much casts a sphere collider on our player while any position that you give it and then it's going to get every single collider that is inside of that. So um, imagine yourself that every one tenth of a second this sphere is being called on your turret and it looks for everything in a certain radius. So uh, in this case we are using the transform.position, so the position of the turret, using the range um, radius. And we also have an additional parameter that I'm going to put, the layer mask, uh, so we don't cast against, say, the floor, and this function is not going to return the floor object to us. So we need to specify which layer we're testing against. And in our case, it's going to be the layer mask dot, um, get mask and get mask that we called enemy, just like this. Oops. Enemy. Okay. Close this function. Now we should have a array of enemies and we're gonna do uh, some tests against them because now let's say we have a, uh, a certain amount of enemies. Say we have three of them. Well, we're gonna make sure that our turret is shooting at the nearest one. So, let's write some condition down here. If all enemies dot length. Let's start by uh, looking at if there is any enemy in the list at all. So if if there is none, it's simply going to return null and we're going to end here. Now if there is more than one enemy, then we're going to do int closest index is equal to zero and also float nearest distance is equal to and now we're going to do vector 3 square magnitude because it's uh, really optimal and we are going to do uh, the distance in between transform.position and all enemies at the first index dot transform that position. Oh, position. So over here we are declaring an int that is going to point toward the closest enemy, well actually the index of the closest enemy in our array over here. And then we are setting that uh, distance, we're getting the distance in between the tower and the first enemy in the list. Uh, we're doing that because we need at least one of these values before we start testing against other enemies in the list. So down here we're going to do for int i is equal to 1. Don't mistake this for 0. This is a 1. We are starting at the index 1 because we already put the value of index 0 up here. So we're starting at 1 if there is any of course. Then we're going to do i all enemy dot length and then I plus plus so basic for loop over here but we're starting at the index number one nice okay now if there is more than one because this is also testing if there is more than one because if I is smaller than all enemy dot length so if there is a more uh, than one enemy in the list then we're gonna do um, float distance we're gonna declare another float we'll say vector 3 Square magnitude again, um, transform the position minus all enemies at the index i dot transform dot position. And yep, so this is returning the square distance in between the enemy uh, at the index i and the tower. So now we do if that distance, so if distance is smaller than the nearest distance then let's do nearest distance is equal to distance and also closest index is now equal to i. Okay so with this code over here we should get the closest index pointing toward the closest enemy in our array. Now let's go down here and return that so return all enemy at the index closest index and we are uh, returning a transform so we return the dot transform okay so that was a big function let's collapse it and this should work actually everything should work we did everything around that so let's go ahead and test this out in game let's hit play on this oh actually you gotta put the uh, the script on the turret of course so drag and drop the base tower on this tower we're gonna remove it later on because base tower is a 
Well, it should be a abstract class, so you can't instantiate one of these by itself. You need to have some kind of uh, parent. Okay, let's press K on this, and if we look down here, Tower is shooting at enemy clone. So we're shooting. Um, of course, it, this doesn't really look obvious. Let's put a raycast, not a raycast, but a debug.draw ray so we see in which direction he's shooting at least. So debug.draw ray, and now it's taking a start in a direction, let's put the start is going to be the uh, transformed position, so the position of the turret, and the direction is going to be a target, so the enemy, that position, so the position of the enemy minus the position of the turret, which is going to give us a directional ray, and after that, let's give it a nice red, bright red color, and a duration so we have the time to see it. Oops. Don't forget your semicolon, and then it should look like this. Okay. Let's go back in game. Hopefully, we can see something now. I'm gonna press play on this. And as you can see, it's shooting at the closest enemy, which is great. Let's put additional turrets so we see the behavior of multiple of these. Gonna press K. Nice. So we're starting something here. We're we're starting to get something. Of course, we're not shooting anything just yet, but it's it's there, and it's targeting the right enemy. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for this episode. We covered a lot of thing, and we are going to cover a lot more because this is going to be a quite a complicated um, system. And yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, so if you enjoyed this, please leave it a like. If you learned something, same thing, please leave it a like. If you have any question or comment, please look at the comment section below. Also, subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.